I think that one's reality is a result of your intention and your attention. It's through spiritual practice that I've recognised that m my own impermanence, my own irrelevance, the fact that I'm just a person shuffling through life, I ain't really no different now from when I was a little kid. And what I, all I want really is that not, I don't want that feeling in my stomach that people are being give, like, treated badly. I don't want a feeling that people are being exploited. People need to live spiritual lives, all of us, I'm a person, and it's good to have access to the infinite consciousness that is available to all people, but through the five senses is delineated, keeping us trapped on a material plane. We think reality is what we can apportion through the limited instruments of the senses, but reality is is of course far beyond that. Spiritual data, we don't have the correct instruments to receive it and we live primarily in the realm of the senses. Anything that we're describing through science, we're describing through the prism of the five limited senses. Our eyes can only see between infrared light and ultraviolet light. There's light bouncing around everywhere. Our ears can only hear a tiny decibel range, can't hear the noise of a dog whistle, can't hear any high-pitched frequency sounds. Isn't it likely then that there are other vibrations, frequencies, energies, consciousness moving through the universe? Con Consciousness is an, a, a, an amorphous and expanding entity. I think that we allow our consciousness to be prohibited by our senses, prescribed by our senses, living in the realm of these five apertures into our reality. But reality is limitless, space is infinite, time eternal. Through yoga, one can temporarily break the bonds that chain us to the mundane, the mondial, that which is of the earth. And we can temporarily at least, receive a taste of the infinite. I don't want to get too cosmic about it, but we are just this sort of temporary blob of atoms, you know, endowed with consciousness for the merest moments in infinite space. Meditation and yoga, these are fundamental parts of my life. I think it's difficult these days with religion getting such a rough ride, the Pope resigning, bloody terrorism and nonsense. It's difficult to find an access to spirituality, but we are by our nature spiritual people. If we don't have access to spirituality, we suffer as individuals, society, Suffers. We need to recognise at some point that within ourselves there's, a, a, there's an infinite capacity for connection with all things. Well, I love the fact that you've life. described it as you have a daily access to unseen realms of power. Daily access to unseen realms of power. Not just me, everyone has that. For me, what I've discovered is that transcendental meditation is useful to me, not because of a unique set of circumstances, not because of my formerly secret brilliance, no, but because I am a human being and it is applicable to all human beings. And that, what's really good about that is literally everyone in this room is one. What I say is that we're basically all right human beings. Whenever there's a disaster or an accident, people's impulse is to help one another. So I'm thinking anyone that galvanises people, brings people together and points us to the better aspects of our nature and help us to overcome our basic things like fear and desire, I think these people are worthy heroes rather than the heroes that are nominated today, heroes that are low vibrational frequency that make us concentrate on daft stuff. So like, like they want you to be talking about Justin Bieber, they want you to be talking about twerking. They, want you, they, don't, they don't want you talking about fracking, they want you talking about twerking. I want to get on with their job, shut your fucking mouths and watch this shit, you fucking morons. And I'm no, because I've been part of the charade. But, you know, I'm awake now. Open a Look beyond no, the superficial, that's the problem with current affairs. You, you forget about what's important, you allow the agenda to be decided by superficial information. What am I saying? What am I talking about? Don't think about what I'm wearing. These things are redundant, I'm superficial. And, like, and, I, and I don't think that we should be continuing to propagate the idea that famous people are magical and special because it makes people feel that their lives ain't no good. Mm. And I don't think we should be living in that kind of uh, fearful paradigm. It's that. I'm a, like a, a vegetarian. I believe we're all equal. I ain't got the right to kill. I don't kill. Like, say a fly comes in my house, I tolerate that little arsehole. Because <laughs> I feel like he's a fly. He's just on his journey here through life. When I'm meditating or praying, I, I say the infinite creative force that brings into being uh, all phenomena and guides all life, I say, can you move through me? And things that actually work, you sort of treat them, you sort of shirk them off as if, like, you know, as if you owe them money and you don't, well, oh, no, I've got to avoid yoga and meditation. They've been portrayed quite brilliantly by the, the mainstream as sort of somehow luxury, but it isn't a luxury or artificial or superficial. It's absolutely integral. It's absolutely the most authentic thing, more real than any of us. If people are happy, they're happy. They don't need it. If, you, if there's not a problem, there's not a problem. But I think if people have some sort of 
yearning or dissatisfaction or some itchy irritability, then it might be because they're not looking in the right direction for a solution and that they should look within and that within them there is a limitless, infinite capacity for bliss through connection to higher things. You cannot define yourself in reference to other external coordinates. You must define yourself internally with your relationship with a higher entity. Think of yourself as a manifestation of some higher thing, some higher frequency. This is the visible realization. And you know that because you can't see atoms, can you? And you certainly can't see the forces that hold atoms together. There, in the micro quantum world, Richard, lie the answers to everything. We can't understand it with our logical, rational minds, but we feel it intuitively. Get yourself in alignment with that stuff and you beam like the sun. The dead human ape has fulfilled its potential. The dead human ape has not evolved for the last 10,000 years. These are the achievements of the dead human ape. Now we must, we must uh, transform, become enlightened, right. so that we can access the next realm of consciousness necessary for our evolution. Right. So I think we elect to ignore the spiritual at our own, for, and it causes a deficit for ourselves and for our culture and for our planet. I think that we are too easy to identify ourselves as individuals. This, uh, that, that idea is fortified daily through, as we said before, the stimulation of primal desires, that which anchor us to the self, and we ignore that we're here for such a short while that we're all basically the same as one another, we're all connected to each other and we have a collective responsibility to it. God is not something that's about thinking you're better than someone or a reason to have a war with someone, it's that within us, beneath, our, beneath and beyond our identity as human beings, driven by fear and desire, defined by the realm of the senses and the material self, which is transitory, there is a divine self that is connected to all living things, that isn't part of an infinite source of creativity. You could probably describe that using quantum physics or science if you want. I choose to believe in God because I think what that is, is the recognition that there is divine beauty in all of us. And if we prioritise that over our own selfish material needs, then we will naturally create a culture more in harmony with our planet and we'll have a chance. I think it's one of the great sadnesses of more modern life because of our disenfranchisement and disillusionment with religion that we don't have access to these ideas. And yoga and meditation for me is a way in the secular world of accessing very, very beautiful principles that will perhaps make us happier at a time when people feel disillusioned with the economy, concerned about the ecology, worried with, the, with politicians, don't trust what they're being told on television. I've got to let go of temporary transient ideas like individualism. Uh, the, the, the nature of monotheistic faiths, these dead desert religions, is to encode us with the idea that individualism is more important than paganism, ideologies that integrally relate us to the earth so that we know that we are integrally, ir indefatigably related to our environment and we live in the service of our environment because self is a temporal illusion. I suppose the ultimate truth is oneness, that this is a temporary illusion, that, uh, that we are temporarily occupy these flesh puppets. We be believe so much in our identities, we believe in our individualism, and I talk as a very sort of egotistical man, look at my hair, look at these bracelets, look at these ridiculous boots. I'm a person who believes in the nature of my own individualism and my own identity. But on a deeper level, I recognise that all these things are transient, and what's important and what's defining are the things that we all share, love, unity, togetherness. As long as we have cultural narratives that eschew these ideas, that suppress these ideas in favour of uh, negative human traits, greed, selfishness, lust. As long as these ideas are promoted, we will exist in opposition to one another and will be exploitable by corporations that prey upon these negative facets of humanity. The line between good and evil runs not between cultures, religions or creeds, but through every human heart. So I recognise in myself the capacity for selfishness, for lustfulness, for uh, egotism, and because I recognise these qualities in myself, I would prefer a culture that didn't celebrate, exacerbate, stimulate the most negative aspects of our species, inculcate them, reward them financially, till we get to a, a kind of a cultural hysteria where we're destroying the planet. The reality is there is one planet. There is a certain amount of people on the planet. There are a certain amount of resources on the planet. None of them things are going to last forever. So we need systems in place that acknowledge the reality, not systems that benefit elites, but systems that acknowledge the reality. People need to have access to the resources. Can't lie to people so that people in power can continue to augment and grow their own uh, power and satisfaction while normal people are exploited. We need systems that get the resources to the people while respecting the planet. Any system that's detrimental to the planet or detrimental to the people because it helps one or two bods, fuck it off. We're allowed to do that, you know. We are, we are creatures on a planet. We are mammals. Look at the faces of the people that we're being asked to vote for as leaders. Look at them. 
Look at them, feel it in your hearts. That ain't who's meant to be leading us. Happiness cannot forever be sustained like some glistening bauble. It's a transitory thing, like a butterfly alighting on Snow White's finger in that bit of Snow White. So, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy mostly. I'm happy mostly when I'm being nice to other people. Then I'm happy. You know, when they an anal analyse the semantics consistently through mythology and theology of words like love, God, they find that the, the common theme, John, is union that we just want to be connected to something higher. That can be another person, that could be God, that could be a relationship with nature, it could even be a relationship with West Ham United. I think the important thing is to have this, the central tenet of your being, love, compassion and tolerance. Everyone knows that. You know, like the realisation that this is only a very temporary thing, that the only thing that matters to any of us is love, that everything, that underscoring everything is love. You know, if, it, if it's a biological anatomical human condition, the idea of acquisition and survival of the species, then that 2% that distinguishes us from the great ape, somewhere within that is that divine spark that philosophers have always espoused upon and written about, that somewhere within that, that's the truth that we're trying to head towards. What it felt to me was like, the dissolution of my idea of myself. Like, uh, I felt like separateness evaporated. I felt this tremendous sense of oneness. I find it, I'm quite an erratic thinker, quite an adrenalized person. And like, but what, through meditation, I felt this, abs this sort of beautiful serenity and uh, selfless connection. You know, my sort of uh, tendency towards selfishness, I felt like, uh, I felt that kind of exposed as a superficial and pointless perspective to have. I felt a very relaxed sense of oneness. I felt, uh, uh, I felt love. Follow me on Twitter if you want to, at Rusty Rockets, but basically carry on doing what you're doing, being happy in your hearts.